now move on the debate on preparing for and dealing with crisis. Strengthening the resilience of the Union, its regions and cities. I would like to welcome our uh, guest speaker, Commissioner Yanis Lenarchik, uh, for being here today uh, and thank him for having accepted our invitation. I also have the pleasure to introduce Christophe Clergeau, our member, to the, and, and thank him for joining us in this very important debate. As you know, um, Christophe uh, is uh, the rapporteur of the uh, opinion on this issue. So thank you, thank you so much for both of you. Commissioner Lenarchik, um, I think we have, previous to your intervention, we have a video. Is that correct? It's ready, yes. When you say. The video may enter. There is no country in Europe where the impact of climate change cannot be seen and felt. From floods to forest fires, from torrential rains to droughts, extreme climate events are threatening people and the economy all over the EU. Urgent steps are needed to better anticipate natural disasters and tackle the consequences of climate change. Regions and cities are doing their part, combining long-term vision and concrete actions. Commissioner Lennarchik, you have the floor for 10 minutes. Thank you, Mr. President. Ladies and gentlemen, <clears throat> I will start with uh, my thoughts being these days with uh, the people of uh, northern Italy, where severe floods, the overflowing rivers and uh, landslides have struck the Emilia-Romagna region. Immediately after we received a request for assistance from the Italian authorities. Nine EU member states offered assistance through the Union Civil Protection Mechanism. This is our tool for a swift and coordinated response in emergencies through which we support regions and communities in the time of crisis. And one of those that is now offering um, help to Italy is Belgium. Two years ago, local communities in large parts of Belgium were also devastated by flooding. Flooding that took lives, that wrecked livelihoods, and destroyed hundreds of homes. In Belgium's time of need, over 150 rescuers from Italy, from France, and Austria rushed to the 
aid of communities in Liège and Limburg, thanks to the Union Civil Protection Mechanism again. Or last summer, when Europe suffered one of the worst wildfire seasons in recent history, wildfires that shattered communities, ruined lives and livelihoods, and burned an area that is several times the size of, for instance, the Rome capital region or the Madrid capital region. In response, over 350 firefighters and many planes from a number of EU member states were deployed to help national emergencies in 12 regions across Europe, from Albania to Portugal. So, in short, today, Europe faces an increasing number of systematic, cross-border and cross-sectoral challenges, and they are all exacerbated by what I would call, by what I would call climate crisis, not just change, but crisis. To illustrate, over the past decade, activations of the Union Civil Protection Mechanism in response to emergencies have risen by an average of 350 percent. Last year alone, this mechanism was mobilized over 320 times, with about half of these activations coming from Ukraine due to the criminal Russian invasion of the country. At a time when the crises we face are globally interlinked and have global impact, we must make sure that we are also focused on the local level. This is where the people are, and this is where the effects of disasters are felt. It is cities and regions who are witnessing the realities of these changes and these dangers, because every activation of the mechanism is another community in crisis. It's another neighborhood hit by disaster. As disaster, disasters increase in frequency and intensity, the EU is stepping up to help communities across Europe and beyond. But we are not dealing only with the response to disasters. The mechanism focuses also on disaster preparedness, on national prevention actions, and the exchange of best practices because we can only protect communities by building a stronger and more resilient future together. And this is why we have established the five European Disaster Resilience Goals. They are designed to enable regions to anticipate and to withstand future emergencies. They cross sector, they cross border to save lives and better protect local areas. But of course, these goals are nothing if they are not implemented. And for this, we have introduced five flagship initiatives, one each for each goal. The first goal is to better anticipate. We should better anticipate future disasters by developing Europe-wide disaster scenarios so as to support planning and preparedness for major emergencies. Second goal is to better prepare. We will boost the preparedness of communities by launching the so-called Prepare EU. This is a pan-European awareness raising program for disaster resilience targeting wider population. The third goal is alert. With this, we want to build more effective early warning systems and especially to link them to local action. Fourth, respond. We want to ensure that the mechanism is well equipped to provide the support that is needed also by scaling up the rescue strategic reserve of response capacities. And fifth goal is to secure the functioning of civil protection systems that are secure from disasters. And for that purpose, we will organize stress testing of the emergency operation centers throughout Europe. I'm very much encouraged to see that the Committee of the Region already has disaster resilience very high on your agenda, including in the opinion prepared by the Rapporteur Clergeau, which I read with great interest. 
uh, and I see that uh, you want to examine how you can enhance social preparedness, how you can better understand risks and vulnerabilities, and how you would build a cross-border culture of prevention. And these are all the goals that we fully share. Uh, and as I said, what is important is, is that we not only have the goals, but we embark on implementation. And in this, your support is a key to success. Because without the efforts of local and regional authorities, we cannot simply, we cannot reach the communities who need protection. Uh, it is the local and regional authorities that know best the risks on the ground. You have the power to engage with the local communities. And you are the ones who hold the line when disaster hits. So I would be asking you to work together with national authorities to implement the flagship initiatives in your region, to adapt them to your specific situation, to make them their own, your own, simply, and to bring the disaster resilience goals to the lives of your people. Uh, there are many ways how you can put these initiatives into practice, for instance, by upgrading your local risk assessment, by stress testing your local disaster scenarios, and building new partnership across sectors and across geographic borders of your regions and towns. Uh, this requires, of course, cooperation. There are many ways we can cooperate. Uh, take the Prepare EU as the as we prepare to launch this program, there is much that you can learn from uh, your collective experience. And of course, also, we would want to learn about how to engage with local communities. In short, we want to hear your input. Investing in resilience is not only crucial for creating communities that are prepared for disasters of tomorrow, it also strengthens and improves the communities today by generating economic, social, and environmental benefits and strengthening the public budget because preparation ahead of a disaster is up to 10 times cheaper than what you need to repair afterwards if you are not well prepared. We already see uh, localized resilience in action in communities across Europe. Let me share with you some of the examples that we, that we like. For instance, in Kos, in Greece, uh, it, this, is, this is one of the many Mediterranean coastal communities building resilience to tsunamis, thanks also to the support from our civil protection mechanism, by raising risk awareness of the local population, by organizing drills, and by developing alert systems. Or another example is from Portugal, the city of Matosinhos. It has introduced a localized strategy for fighting wildfires. Uh, they increased capacity of the fire brigade, they raised awareness on fire risk, uh, and they enhanced forest management. And this has, is already producing results uh, as local areas have now fewer wildfires than in the past. So, Achieving our resilience goals will be a team effort, uh, and we certainly do not expect you to do this alone. We will be there on the ground to help and work with you. Um, we will talk to you. We will uh, go into schools. We want to build a clear pathways toward more resilient future. Uh, EU offers a range of instruments to support you uh, with investment and work programs on disaster resilience not only through our civil protection mechanism, but also through the cohesion policy. And in this context, I would like in particular to welcome an element from your report where you state that you would like to make crisis resilience a political and programming priority for cohesion policy. I think this is a very good, good call. Thank you so much for your attention. Looking forward to the discussion. Christophe Clerjou, rapporteur, you have the floor for five minutes. Merci, Monsieur le Président. Bonjour à Thank you, Chair. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you, Commissioner, for being here and for um, putting your team from DG Echo behind all uh, this, this hard work for months. You mentioned that crises are coming faster and faster. I'd add that these aren't just linked to climate change, but also health crises. They're also linked to 
uh, conflicts of all kinds, and you know we might have to deal with nuclear uh, fallouts or uh, uh, bio warfare. So we're starting from the principle that we don't know what the next crises will be, but that we will know who the first victims will be, because a crisis is primarily uh, humanitarian, and its impact depends on how society is organized, and its most fragile members are often the first victims. Uh, public services, uh, community solidarity, and infrastructure are all key elements. So we want to have societal preparedness, so the ability to organize society to face crises in a, uh, with solidarity and cohesion in the most... Uh, in the best way possible. And it's this idea of collective preparation which seems important to invest in right now. So you need a cross-cutting global approach within the Commission as well. You are responsible for uh, civil protection, but the links also with um, security as a whole and food security, uh, these links are essential. We are just getting out of the COVID uh, crisis, but in order for this cross-cutting work to uh, be achievable, it would be useful to have a platform uh, that would unite every aspect of society and the institutions as well in order to be able to work uh, globally. As you mentioned, it's important to know our vulnerabilities to reduce them and to prevent crises, it's important to reduce vulnerabilities. There exists the Vulnerability Scoreboard, a Vulnerability Index, and this is a very important tool. It helps us describe the risks on a global, regional, and local level. And we are volunteers to test this tool on a local level to see if they, it uh, corresponds to information from gathered uh, locally and how it can be best used. In the spirit of preparation, uh, for crises, as you said, it's important to put the idea of vulnerability at the heart of future cohesion policy. It has to be legitimized, but it also has to be a, an element uh, borne in mind when uh, coming up with finances. Why not make it a specific um, department? I'd like to give a few examples of suggestions and proposals mm -hmm. that we make uh, in the context of uh, disaster resilience goals that you mentioned. First, as you said, there are very specific uh, areas of concrete uh, partnerships, and perhaps this could create a formal partnership between the Committee of Regions and the Commission on this topic. Why would this be good? Well, we would be a lot more useful if we're better invested in the knowledge network uh, created by DG ECHO. We could also mobilize for the Prepare EU projects, and we want this to be a truly European project. We want uh, cities and uh, smaller regions to be present and be able to uh, give their opinion and their proposals to DG ECHO. We've also made specific proposals to better uh, train young people, not just in first aid, but also in the correct attitudes to have in situations of danger or crisis. We want there to be a Europe-wide promotion of good citizenship uh, because in France this exists with the Red Cross, but it depends on the country. We also want to create a European school of uh, risks and crises. In Nîmes, in France, there is already the beginnings of such a school to minimize risks and crises. To wrap up, this is a new political question. We need to be better organized to better manage crises. We think that you've done a lot in this uh, field, but we really need to prepare uh, our communities and create a shared culture of prevention to stop the worst of the uh, crises. Now we go to political groups. Member CDO, you have the floor for two minutes. Mr. President. President, Commissioner, thank you very much. Thank you on behalf of Italy and my colleagues in Emilia Romagna for all the solidarity that has been expressed at the start of the work by 
the Bureau yesterday, uh, by the President of the Committee, and today by the Commissioner. European peoples over the last few years have been faced with an increasing number of crises which have really s impacted the daily lives of millions of citizens. Our society is advanced and complex, but it's only said to be fragile and unprepared in some areas, unprepared to deal with new and unknown uh, crises like the recent COVID pandemic, the drought in areas which previously were rich in water, but also in the face of better known uh, disasters and crises, such as the recent floods in Emilia-Romagna. I am the president of the Piedmont region, uh, uh, and we're on uh, two weeks high alert for um, possible, possible rain damage, but we're also faced with a problem of drought. It's an incredible situation. On the one hand, we have droughts. On the other hand, we have floods. Fortunately, my region in uh, the past has always been able to invest uh, in the upkeep of its territory and the protection of its uh, lands. Uh, a lot of work was done thanks to uh, the crises of the 1990s and 2000s, and we've been better equipped to deal with the problems we face with today. But often we find that funds are used for other purposes, whether it's cross-border funds, cohesion funds, uh, uh, to secure our um, cities and areas, which could perhaps be used uh, uh, also elsewhere. And that's why we think we need a specific dedicated fund to make sure that we are better protected. You have the floor for, one min for two minutes. Thank you, Mr. President, the Commissioner. Uh, I will continue in German. Zunächst einmal, uh First of all, we all know that the risk of crisis is increasing. Climate change is already here. We're right in the middle of it. We're seeing uh, fall... Um, fires, floods, all sorts, landslides. The risks of pandemics is also increased through globalization and many more. So we need risk analyses, we need a scoreboard for weaknesses, and we need appropriate infrastructure, risk plans which can react, and as well as setting out the ne necessary infrastructure protection for buildings and so on. But essentially we need a shared approach which involves the community. And here the role of cities and regions is decisive, particularly because we can include volunteers. For example, in South Tyrol, my region, there are more than a half a million inhabitants and 20,000 volunteers are working in civil protection. And so this helped us during the pandemic, but also whenever there are natural uh, disasters. And it's important to involve the community to create a culture of risk management, an awareness of risk situations, and particularly in highlighting the importance of volunteerism and increasing the commitment of volunteers, because this ensures that a lot more can be done, as we have seen from p past events in our region. Thank you. Antonio Mazeo, two minutes. Gentile Commissario. Commissioner, President, colleagues. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for the attention that you are paying to what is happening so terribly in Emilia-Romagna and to some extent also in Tuscany, where I'm from. The pictures that we're seeing and that we've all been struck by have... Um, uh, all being due to climate change. In 36 hours, we have the same precipitation uh, that we would normally have in six months in Emilia-Romagna. 15 people have died. 20,000 people have been displaced. 6 billion euros worth of damage. And that's just an estimate at the moment. In Mugello, in the Tuscan area that I come from, we've seen a little bit of this as well. 200 landslides, some communities which have been completely isolated. Allow me, if I may, to address what was said by the Commissioner before, the need for solidarity. Once again, Europe has to show what Europe can do, and it's doing that. I would like to thank the volunteers from the uh, civil protection groups 
Italians, but also people from across Europe. Uh, we need help uh, for companies, for families, uh, and it's going to be vital that we be able to access the European Solidarity Fund if we're going to be able to overcome this emergency. This is true for the emergency situation we find ourselves in now, but as the Commissioner has said, we also have to work on a climate pact and a prevention plan to make sure that Italy and Europe as a whole are properly protected. Prevention has to be the key word. Often that's not the case. We're often running behind the curve. We need a European plan to make sure that we can secure our territory, so to make our infrastructure resilient and to protect our communities. What we need is a proposal that I'm making to you now, which I hope we're taken on board by the Italian government and then by Europe. Let's make sure that we use uh, the, the national recovery and resilience plans, which, funds which can't be used could be used for uh, prevention plans. It's an inversion of the paradigm that we need to have. Member Peter Kaiser, two minutes. Thank you, Sergei. Thank you very much, Commissioner. And thank you, Commissioner Lecharchitz. I agree with the five priorities which you've set out. It's an important direction we're going, and we need to focus on these measures. In Europe, we're living through a number of crises, and I think it's clear that overcoming these crises together means that our, our future will depend on cross-border cooperation in our regions. And so it's the duty of everyone, all politicians and everyone throughout the regions, to create the necessary framework for cooperation in disaster protection. I would like to give the example of my region. We're working very closely with our Italian counterparts in the region of Venice, but we're also working with the Republic of Slovenia and we're working across these borders. And it's important that we n n look at the prevention of crises and involve this in further EU programs. We want to have measures for cl a safer climate policy, for example, uh, measures such as those in the Green Deal, de-risking, uh, removing the dependence on areas which are at risk. We need to solve these problems at a European level, locally and regionally. Overall, I think, and this is a further point, that we must have international, interregional projects at a European level. In the past, for example, we had a situation in our region where Slovenia and uh, in Italy, they were able to get water from Carinthia and use that for putting out fires. So this is the kind of thing that we need in future, more international projects. Thank you very much. Thank you. Member Caputo, three minutes. Grazie. Thank you very much, President. Thank you, Commissioner. Janacic for reminding us of what has been happening in Emilia-Romagna in Italy. And thank you for this debate, which I think is extremely important for Europe, uh, given the problem of climate change and the various international crises we're faced with. These are things the entire European continent will have to deal with. We're going to be hard put to it in terms of crisis management and promoting resilience, which will be required by the different member states to deal with all the challenges facing uh, the various regions. And making communities more resilient has to be one of the political priorities of the European Union and, and the Committee of the Regions. We need proper cooperation between the European regions to promote resilience and de-risking, which is going to be key if we're going to be able to deal with the threats and find common solutions to the challenges that we're living through. Uh, we have to make sure that we have a different uh, uh, approach. We have to have a promotion of synergies between regions, nation states and European Union with a greater level of ambition shown by the institutions. Climate change is significantly changing the future of entire economic systems, including of our agriculture. And this is particularly true of the Mediterranean area. They're going to find the phone find themselves faced with major changes in uh, product quality and production methods. Um, we have to be able to find a constructive uh, approach. Um, 
we need to find a way of uh, talking with stakeholders about the true prospects of strengthening resilience in the different regions. Uh, this has to be based on a number of key points which can then be developed into strategic guidelines enabling us to better protect the future of our different territories. Um, and I think we could uh, do nothing better than to start on the basis of the NAT uh, opinion, which will be submitted in a couple of weeks, on strengthening resilience of the European Union and its regions and cities. We think this could be an important instrument in promoting open uh, and honest discussions on the needs for uh, EU intervention and to put forward specific proposals on how we can strengthen resilience at the local and regional level. The member states uh, will work better together than individually. At the European Union level, we need to develop and strengthen different support measures to help people deal with the risks and better manage risks and crises uh, tailored to regional needs to have a virtuous process of strengthening EU resilience EU-wide. Thank you very much. Thank you <clears throat> so much. Member Marsilio, you have the floor for two and a half minutes. La resilienza. Resilience is going to be key in uh, public policy in the future, and we, are, as the ECR, are key to see that this is being done. Whether it's earthquakes, uh, um, forest fires or floods, there are alarm bells showing what climate change will do in the future. There will be more and more in the way of these sorts of disasters. My region in 2009, as you saw in the video, this is the Abruzzo area, uh, had a... Uh, um, an earthquake uh, which caused hundreds of deaths and we had another more, a smaller earthquake in 2017. Uh, we've been doing a lot of work but we are very vulnerable to these sorts of disasters and I would also like to thank everybody for the solidarity that is being shown to us uh, for the floods in Emilia Romagna and the other areas. The local and regional authorities have to define and advance their strategies because they need to be able to act immediately in emergency situations and communities can't be left alone. Actions of member states can promote, uh, can help to limit, dam limit damages thanks to the European Civil Protection Mechanism. Nine countries were able to send equipment to Emilia Romagna to pump the waters out of the flooded areas. Uh, Technical uh, assistance has been provided. There's been training uh, to help the regions and uh, communities to deal with these phenomena better in the future. We need closer attention to be paid to prevention policies, which are going to be necessary to increase the level of resilience in the face of risks which are not always foreseeable. Furthermore, we need to be able to strengthen cooperation between European regions. Uh, the, Disasters know no borders, and they're becoming stronger and more ferocious. Um, in the recent earthquake which struck in Turkey, Europe was again able to show solidarity, and I'm proud of the fact that my own region was able to send help to the people of Turkey through the civil protection mechanism. Uh, we, if we have a long-term policy along these lines, it will not only save money, but more importantly, it will save many lives. Thank you. Member Kobor, you have the floor for two minutes. <clears throat> Dear colleagues, the European Union is, is confronted with an, an increasing number of crises with growing complexity causing uh, suffering and other devastating consequences. Improving the EU's capacity in crisis management has become one of the essential issues, issues to ensure the EU is able to respond quickly. We need to ensure that the first reaction in crisis every time is locally, though it is an important part of the subsidiarity. Uh, being a green, I have to say that 50 years after the first prediction of the Club, Club of Rome, we will and we are living now in a chaotic world, enver environmentally, economically, socially. Being a physicist, we also need to be prepared for any accidents which may happen and cause, it, for instance, radiation and other kind of contamination. In the, we hope that Chernobyl will ne never again happen, but we need to be prepared. 
in this case, the best preparation is prevention in technology. And very openly, we have to speak about war situations when industrial facilities, inclusive nuclear facilities, got into bombing, as it was in Yugoslavia in the 90s and as it is today in Ukraine and Russia. And radioactive contamination because of using depleted uranium munition, etc., etc. I agree that we need a vision that integrates both risk management and crisis management. The European Union can also play a role in training decision and policy makers to coordinate and manage crises. In result, an efficient and decisive European response to crisis can only improve citizens' perception and trust of the EU. Thank you. Thank you. Member Frey, two minutes. Commissioner, President, thank you very much. We've heard some very all, terrible news from North Italy, but there are also other regions affected by floods. A number of people have lost their lives, others lost their belongings, their homes, and the consequences won't be overcome tomorrow. There will be other consequences which will continue to be felt over months and years. So we shouldn't just be thinking about this today, but also long into the long term. And ultimately, we also need to tackle the causes. A lot has, a lot of time has been wasted in the past, and now we're paying for this dearly. We have to tackle human-made climate change and ensure that it's reduced, because otherwise disasters will be increasing in the EU. We must improve uh, crisis management and work in a spirit of solidarity. Therefore, we also have we need um, functioning um, functioning European projects, which will increase uh, cross-border solidarity. For example, what we saw in the COVID-19 pandemic, I'm very pleased that in Germany we were able to take in patients from abroad and also we were able to benefit from intensive care beds abroad when that was short in Germany. We want to ensure that we overcome unnecessary borders and barriers at the borders. So I would Commissioner, like to say that make sure that you tackle uh, crisis provisions in border regions. If we can increase the effectiveness of this, we can strengthen the EU as a whole. Thank you. Member Turley, you have the floor for one minute. <coughs> Good afternoon, uh, Mr. Commissioner. You are a brave man. You took this mandate because crises have become a daily phenomenon. We are practically living under crisis circumstances. In the EU, we are trying to solve this issue, as any issue in the EU, at three levels. So we have the EU level, national and the local level. We represent municipalities here. I think it would be very, very important to limit the area of competence of each of this level of governance. This would uh, allow us to better understand the problem and to find the best solution. You are used to working with uh, scientists in your work. You are inviting scientists to develop crisis strategy. This is really commendable effort. We certainly also need to earmark resources, their availability, and uh, look at professionalism. Thank you. Thank you. I come from Croatia. I'm from a border region which had an earthquake very recently, and we were profoundly affected. And it's clear that the local and regional authorities play an important role. Civil protection also plays a vital role as well as the system of police and firemen and various voluntary associations who cooperated to work together and tackle these situations. And there is an important sentence 
which states that good coordination of all s services is vital. And only if the coordination is good in these difficult situations can we ensure the safety of our citizens. We will be able to tackle all these uh, crises situations. So essentially, with good quality and good use of financial resources, coordination of all bodies, then this is the only way we'll be able to put an end to such suffering. Thank you. One minute. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Just a week ago, I was at home in my county in Croatia, but there was a disaster because of the floods. And a huge amount of rain just fell in one day. A lot of material harm was damaged. A lot of crops were damaged. Uh, buildings were, were harmed. And unfortunately, uh, children were left without the necessary social infrastructure, such as schools and daycare. So further inf investments need to be made to ensure that in future all uh, members of our society will be protected f and we should draw all the necessary funding from whatever tools have exist. Thank you. You have the floor for one minute. Thank you, Mr. President. We face crisis after crisis. They are more and more related to climate and environmental issues. If we look around ourselves, we will see that all the crises are either caused by climate or environment factors or have devastating impact on climate and environment, with severe consequences on human beings. So crisis prevention and rapid reaction to them become must. How do we do that? By building capacity to prevent crises and by establishing effective response mechanisms to reduce their impact. To provide rapid response, we need to have effective governance mechanisms. The overlaps of several plans and instruments in the Green Deal are not helpful at all. We need to streamline them and ensure effective governance mechanism with the full involvement of local authorities. Crisis response is by definition local. This is why all the actions must be co-designed with the local authorities, which will have to pay the price of non-action and react to emergencies when the crisis breaks out. Thank you. Thank you. Member Maruzic, you have the floor for one minute. Ladies and gentlemen, we're seeing more and more disasters within the EU. In Croatia, in a very short period of time, we suffered from COVID, but also major floods, which happened just a few days ago. In my county, we are on the border with Bosnia and Herzegovina, and the river Sava flows between our regions across 200 kilometers, and there has been floods along this river. Just a few years ago, there was a catastrophic flood in the same area, the consequences of which were very serious. And so we have to work together with our neighbors in Bosnia and Serbia. We implemented a program to protect those areas from floods. And from our experience, we've seen how important it is for local authorities to work together to prevent crises. And we've also seen that how we can work with countries even when they're not EU members. This strengthens all of our communities. Thank you. Member Dobroslavic, you have the floor for one minute. Thank you very much, President. Thank you very much to the rapporteur. I would like to express my condolences to the people of Emilia, Romania, but we've seen that over the recent years we're increasingly being struck by crises. The COVID-19 pandemic was a global pandemic which was caused a great deal of death and suffering. The Russian Federation's attack on Ukraine and on Western values it was another terrible event. There have been earthquakes, particularly in my country, Croatia, and this is not coming to an end, particularly because of climate change, which we are experiencing. We need to organize ourselves, equip ourselves to face the challenges of the future. And so in, because of the insecurity caused by the COVID-19, we, we can see that the European Union was able to react appropriately. And we all appreciate the efforts which were made, particularly in my region. However, we need to be properly equipped and prepared. Thank you. The floor for one minute.
Member Veslikash, you have the floor yes. for one minute. Thank you very much, President. At a local and regional level, there are all sorts of disasters which are taking place which require a rapid reaction. We need to find solutions to these as quickly as possible. Unfortunately, when it comes to such disasters, a lot of areas are being affected. And in my region, we've seen that we're facing a number of uh, problems due to flooding and ex excess rain. And in our community is therefore uh, at risk, as well as the various buildings which have suffered due to flooding. Uh, there have also been landslides in Croatia. So a lot of disasters related to this flood just in the last month. So this will be felt throughout the next months. I think that prevention needs to be a priority in the future. Thank you. Thank you so much. Member Egedus, you have the floor for one minute. The Committee of the Regions, over recent years we have seen unexpected crises, floodings uh, and the like, and it is to be welcomed that the European Union has kick-started mechanisms that can support quick reaction. However, it is our joint interest to do more for prevention and to uh, step up the resilience of municipalities in order to decrease um, the, the uh, weak points. Uh, we need uh, union uh, resources uh, evenly distributed between everyone. Uh, these funds cannot be the tools of ideological or political blackmailing. It is our joint interest to uh, uh, act together when it comes to these challenges. Thank you. Thank you. Member Wallner, you have the floor for one minute. Herr Präsident, Herr Berichterstatter, Herr President, Rapporteur, I would like to thank you for having taken up this topic on the agenda. It's very important when the Committee of the Regions tackles such topics, and it's important that the Commission recognizes the importance of this. We need to structure our discussions about combating these uh, phenomena. It needs to be tackled in situ, ensuring that we can have cross-border assistance when necessary. But what really the framework of combating crises is a broader approach, which, and I think everyone has spoken in, in that direction. We need greater prevention, uh, infrastructure, more volunteering. We should come up with systems where we are less dependent on Europe generally and there's that where there is greater cooperation within regions. We can see, for example, when we had problems in COVID due to lack of masks and medicine, we had to come up with other solutions. And we want to avoid future dependency. We need to be able to manage on our own. Thank you. You have the floor for one minute. Grazie. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you for the solidarity that you immediately expressed for my city and for the territory I belong to. I'm from the area around Ravenna, which is one of the areas worst hit by the floods that we see in these last weeks. The situation remains very difficult. There are still many uh, villages uh, and towns uh, where the flooding is still very prevalent. The European um, Union has uh, helped and many mayors from the region I belong to have asked for me to thank you on their behalf. Uh, 
It's a very important thing to talk about today, uh, this crisis management issue. We're faced with global warming, uh, but we've seen a lot of environmentalism, a lot of ideology involved, which has prevented the work being carried out on the infrastructure that would have enabled us to contain some of the difficulties and problems caused by these fans. Thank you very much, Chairman. Thank you also to the Commissioner and to uh, our colleague, Mr. Clejo, for his uh, opinion and also for the way in which uh, he has managed the work on this uh, opinion. In 1852, a French intellectual said, uh, governing is foreseeing and not to foresee is to court disaster. Uh, I think that is very true. We're faced with a new challenge today. We have to rise to the challenge, but we have to be able to do that in accordance with our European values. The Cohesion Fund, 30% uh, uh, of the Cohesion Fund goes to emissions reductions. Only 3% goes to crisis management. We need to have a new approach. We're not waiting for the next programming uh, period. We need already to have uh, work on a program which would enable us to work on uh, resilience. Also, the question of who is going to do what. The opinion has covered all the different institutional actors. We have the regions who carry out action plans. You have the communes, uh, the communities. You have the provinces who act on behalf of all the actors. One minute. Herr Präsident, Herr Kommissar, Krisen. President, Commissioner, crisis management is based on five pillars. We absolutely need to have preparation, fund, sus, uh, sustainable funding. We need good prevention, appropriate measures. For example, increasing water retention in the land. We need quicker intervention when disasters take place. We also need the interaction across borders. This needs to function properly to overcome such problems, as well as cooperation at a European level. This is what needs to come on top of everything else, what the EU can do. Uh, this is a concept which can work. We need to have an approach from the European level right up to the EU level to have uh, across the board well-functioning uh, coordination and prevention. Thank you. Kowski, you have the floor for one minute. Thank you, Mr. Commissioner. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, Mr. Commissioner. The mechanism for coordination of cooperation is needed at all levels in Europe, including um, the role of local governments in developing the programs that are important for the resilience of the EU as a whole. Local governments are key in terms of services and infrastructure um, that are um, uh, needed. And often um, there is extra financial or organizational burden involved, which we've seen uh, now during the war on Ukraine, but also in the pandemic. There are also global challenges uh, uh, due to climate change and problems with natural resources. Financial problems also um, may um, make it impossible for local governments to provide services for citizens. So we need to collaborate tightly on all levels in the EU, and that is the only way to provide a um, uh, coherent process, also including the finances. If you have the floor for one minute. Voorzitter, the intention... Chair, the intentions we've spoken about today are very important steps to a very important policy. At the same time, it's a fact that member states have uh, their own responsibilities and they can make their own choices during a time of crisis. The point I want to make is that in those cases, that if neighboring countries make different choices during crises, in the future, uh, border regions will uh, continue to be uh, aided, as we saw during the uh, COVID uh, pandemic. We need a legal tool which can be used with, uh, within the uh, European territory to uh, breach any gaps. I'm asking the Commission to make sure that the European cross-border mechanism uh, receives a much-needed boost. I also want to underline the importance of a testing period to try uh, out uh, methods to help the uh, outermost regions. It's 
Gratuluję panu. Go ahead. Don't be shy. Okay. I try, I try to do my best. Gratuluję panu. Congratulations, Mr. Klejo. It's an excellent opinion. Resilience, obviously, is a competence of the member states, but according to Eurostat, EU citizens expect the EU to be involved once we have a disaster. So um, when that happened in my region in 2017, the civil protection mechanism did work. We received a solidarity funding too, but of course it would be better to uh, prevent than counteract. So um, my um, call on everybody is that everybody join in in a campaign. We have this campaign on uh, disaster risk resilience, uh, making citizens resilient. This is uh, the best way to uh, find out about the best uh, preparation mechanisms and stress tests and solutions in the EU. One minute. Merci, Monsieur le Président. Uh, tout d'abord... Thank you, Chair. First of all, I want to uh, mention our support for the uh, our Italian colleagues who have been affected by these terrible floods. We can attest that we are seeing more and more crises which come suddenly and violently, and they are very diverse in nature. I think right now we're paying for mistakes of the past. Our collective European management needs to have an integrated systemic approach which is forward-looking and uh, which is shared uh, socially to strengthen uh, healthcare resilience, especially, especially in uh, cross-border uh, territories, islands, and uh, uh, overseas territories. This uh, was noticed by our rapporteur. He did an excellent job. We'll, of course, support him. And we congratulate him not just for what he's done here, but everything he's done at, in the Committee of Regions. And we wish him good luck in the European Parliament. Thank you. Member, sir, would you mind to just move a little bit? You? Just a little. Thank you. Member Milana, one minute. Grazie, Presidente. Thank you, Chairman. Everything has changed, um, and we have to get used to that change. If the change is not reversible, then we're going to have to adjust our policies uh, so that we by ourselves bring about a change. Commissioner, I would like to see you report back to the Commission uh, with one thing that we've said here, that we have to make sure that we have integrated action. We can no longer think of having a CAP, the cohesion funds, and everything in their own different silos. Everything has to be uh, a single whole. To give you an example, uh, hydrological disasters lead to humanitarian disasters, as we've seen in Italy. Well, over the last 20 years in my country, the woods, uh, uh, wooded areas have been doubled. Why? Because agriculture has withdrawn from mountainous areas. Uh, so we should stop funding uh, agriculture in the plains and triple funding for agriculture in the mountains. We need to see a change made. Member Sousa Silva, tem a palavra por um minuto. Muito obrigado, Sr. Presidente. Thank you very much, Chair, Commissioner, Reporter, Rapporteur. Uh, management of crises and social protection, as well as the principle of subsidiarity, these are all central, and local and regional authorities are the ones who have the knowledge of the territory and they uh, have contact with the people in, uh, affected. So they are the first port of call whenever a crisis happens. When we look at cohesion funds and support from the EU, we see that there is uh, a lot of support to support states in uh, putting money into uh, things like prepare EU to help prepare for crises. However, the, the support is usually channeled towards the central government and then slowly trickles down to local and regional government. And this uh, doesn't really make a lot of sense. For that reason, I think there's a duty in the COR to talk to the Commission and uh, require all states to provide more support to municipalities so that our response can be more and more efficient, and that we can save more lives. Thank you very much, Chair. Your members, now it's my pleasure to give the floor to one of our 
young elected politicians. Vert, you have the floor for one minute. Vielen Dank. Ich möchte die aktuell äh, die Thank you very much. I would like to speak about the floods in Italy and use it as an as an opportunity to talk about how important it is to tackle this because global warming knows no borders just like extreme weather events. The floods in Emilia-Romagna were not just caused by unexpectedly heavy rain, but also because of other um, super-regional factors, because of, for example, the melting of snow in higher regions and so on. Uh, heat waves, uh, droughts, floods are becoming increasingly common and stronger, and it is no longer sufficient just to react. In order to make our regions too resilient, we need a real change which takes into account the economical and social aspects too. Thank you. Much. I don't have any other requests for the floor, so this gives me the opportunity to give the floor to Commissioner Leonard Chick for five minutes. Final remarks. Thank you very much. Uh, I will uh, be very quick uh, in view of the lateness of the hour. Just a couple of points. Some of you mentioned the importance of volunteers. Here I have to underline the fact that uh, the organization of civil protection services, civil protection system, is the prerogative of member states. We do not interfere with that. However, there is a number of member states that have uh, civil protection systems that are largely based on volunteers. <laughs> And we see it as a good practice, and we encourage others to look into this good practice. Of course, one should not forget that uh, volunteers need to be very well trained and equipped so as to play a good role in civil protection. And that is the case in most of the countries that have this system. Many of you mentioned the importance of prevention. I cannot agree more. As I said in my introduction, prevention can be up to ten times more uh, effective and cheaper than, than uh, uh, reparation and uh, response uh, if you are not prepared. And you also identified that in the opinion, uh, Mr. Rapporteur. Uh, so what do we do on prevention? Well, this Commission has offered European Green Deal as the overriding, overriding prevention strategy because if you want to prevent even worse climate-related disasters, we need to lower our carbon footprint and we need to reach the goal of carbon neutrality uh, by, <clears throat> by reducing our emissions of, of greenhouse gases. And as you know, the European Commission has set the goal to reach carbon neutrality by 2050. Uh, hopefully we could get there even earlier. The sooner the better, the sooner uh, we reach that goal, uh, the, less, the less negative impact, the further climate crisis will have. But of course, there are already uh, some uh, impact of the climate crisis with us, as uh, many of you have noted, and that can no longer be prevented. So what can no longer be prevented requires our better preparation and adaptation. And this is the direction in which we want to go with our recommendation on disaster resilience goals. And I also know that this is exactly the same direction uh, offered or proposed by the opinion prepared by Rapporteur Claire Jo that is under co your consideration today. Uh, next point, uh, there should be more Europe. Yes, of course, uh, that's the whole philosophy of European European um, civil protection mechanism. It is designed for situations when a country, a member state, or any third country of the world is hit by a disaster of such dimensions that it overwhelms its own national capacities. This is, for instance, now the case with Italy, where Italy requested assistance and it was uh, sent there. But there is also very strong added value of European cooperation in cross-border situations. Many of you point to the fact that disasters, especially climate-related events, do not know borders, and that's precisely the reason why we need to strengthen further our cooperation also at the European level. And uh, it is also important to work in a cross-sectoral sense. I can assure you that we are working very well together with my colleagues, commissioners responsible for other areas to illustrate 
the crisis that is caused by Russian invasion on, on Ukraine is a cross-sectoral one. It's not only strictly civil protection. But through Union civil protection mechanism, we provide also assistance from other sectors, not just uh, from traditional civil protection. That's why we worked very well together, for instance, with Commissioner Kiriakides, and we set up together a medical evacuation scheme with the help of uh, Polish authorities, and by now we have evacuated more than 2,000 patients and wounded from Ukraine to more than 20 countries in Europe. Uh, we have also worked together with uh, Commissioner Wojciechowski in providing agricultural equipment to Ukraine and so on. So and I could uh, talk about this a lot, but I just want to, to assure you that we are very much conscious of the need to work in a cross-sectoral mode also. And my final word, our cooperation. We, according to our legal basis, are mandated to work with national civil protection authorities. But we do have channels to work with you also. And there are two channels. For the first one is obvious. This is between the Committee of the Regions and the European Commission. I'm here today, and this is one of the channels. The other channel is, and please use it, through the national civil protection authorities. Work with them. We have many proposals for cooperations and cross-border sections between regions and uh, cities that go, come to us <laughs> through the national authorities, and we, we support them afterwards. So I would encourage you to be proactive. I very much believe in our working together to reach the common goal, which is increased resilience of European citizens. Thank you. Thank you so much, Commissioner. Thank you for being with us, and thank you for sharing. Um, it's been a pleasure. Now we're going to move to point eight, the, um, the adoption of the opinion on preparing for and dealing with crisis, strengthening the resilience of the Union, its regions and cities. But first, I give the floor to Christophe. Uh, for uh, final remarks, I don't want if you want to mix the presentation of the opinion remarks ending the, and concluding the other debate. Please go ahead. You have the floor. Merci, President. Merci à tous les. Thank you, Chair. Thank you to all the members for intervening in this session. We all seem to agree. I rarely, I've only seen so many. Uh, intervention which mobilizes everyone in this way. I think this is a very important political uh, issue, so this is something we can keep in mind for future work. Thank you also for uh, the uh, Socialist Group and the uh, NAT Group for uh, accompanying me here. Of course, my colleague's team uh, has been leading uh, important developments over three and four years, and they are very well placed to create and discover new tools for DG Echo. I just want to make a few comments, because clearly, well, there's only one uh, amendment which is the subject of an oral compromise, so there's not much uh, to say. First, thank you to the colleagues who insisted on diversity of the risks and the crises. We can't just focus on the risks and crises which are environmental in nature, and accelerated by climate change. But the two biggest crises we've seen in the past three years are COVID and the displacement of five million Ukrainians because of Russian aggression. This has led to massive mobilization, uh, civic engagement, and we don't know which crises we'll have to uh, face tomorrow. So yes, of course, we have to bear the environmental aspect in mind, but we also have to think about the uh, real stakes, uh, the socio-economic I want to thank the Commissioner and Guido Milana for speaking about the Green Deal, the policies which need to be reformed, we need to change our model. If agriculture is living around flow, uh, if infrastructure is the green thing, if a uh, healthcare system and hospitals uh, are over we have people becoming increasingly isolated, even in cities that have more um, damage, uh, physical and uh, social. 
we need to create a this, uh, this, uh, society which has solidarity, and this is completely essential. Cooperation. We need a real program for, uh, for cooperation. Uh, reinforce uh, the uh, cohesion policies. Propose three system which for resilience and uh, 